Coming up this week on the Course of Life podcast, I'm back with another winner. Thanks to the Bryson D. Shambo show at Bay Hill. We dive into some great moments from this past weekend, plus things like concert FOMO and missing out on live music when we get into tuned in and something new on HBO Max as well. And this week's guest for everyone is Hardy from Boston's 98.5 The Sports Hub, sports radio host in Boston. You hear him every day with Zolak and Bertrand. We talk golf, Boston sports, and a whole lot more. Finish with a couple sports tidbits and a new friend to introduce you when we hashtag always end with food. All of it brought to you by our friends at Active Body. Mike, it's my go-to way five days a week to get in a quick five to 10 minute workout. The Active Body Active 5 unit is my go-to. It's the easiest way to work in the comfort of your own home. It's a simple device that allows you to effectively stretch and, and get on top of those muscles that need some extra stretching. Uh, so our promo code is COL for 20% off your Active 5 unit. Check out Active Body. They have a full line of products that can make you feel better, make you feel active, in a really quick and easy way. So again, it's the Active 5 unit brought to you by Active Body and our promo code is COL for 20% off at activebody.com. Webs and welcome to Course of Life, part of the Morning Breed Podcast Network. We are proud to be presented by our friends at Desert Fox Golf, Gruen Golf, and Tossy Snacks. I'm Michael, he's Alex, and Alex, it was a uh, beefy showing this week at the Arnold Palmer Invitational in Bay. Yes, Hill. it was. Uh, it was just uh, how I mean. How how do you like how do you like your beef? Do you like it? Do you like it well done? Because I think Bryson was was well done. Yeah, I mean, this steak was on the grill the whole week, yeah. and, and it didn't get overdone. It was just right. I, I'd been talking about this on last week's episode. Uh, you can listen back to there when I told everyone that this was absolutely a Bryson course and a Bryson week. It, it's wide open areas to hit big, long drives, and that was on full display. Like I said, the Bryson DeChambeau show in full effect and we had just some genuinely like this is fun i'm having fun moments <laughs> this past weekend uh, in orlando it, it, genuinely entertaining yes and I, I think uh you know obviously bryson was having fun just shouting after the ball on the for him drivable par five six yeah drivable <laughs> par five you just said yes <laughs> Only drivable to, par let's five. be honest though it's drivable because it goes all the way around the water and he just has the distance to carry the water um, exactly. So, but of course, then we also had Lee Westwood mimicking Bryson uh, as well. So they, yes. they, all the guys out there seem to be having a lot of fun this week. Yeah, this was the goal all week. And even from the practice rounds late, early last week, everyone was gathered around the 6T to see how much of the water Bryson could cut off. It was somewhere in the neighborhood of a 340 to 350 carry, depending on mm-hmm. where you were in the wind and the tees and whatnot. So they're wondering if it could happen. And it didn't happen early on the week. But as the week progressed, the wind changed. Things became more fortuitous and the Saturday moment was the ultimate where he hit the bomb he immediately when it was just at full trajectory Mike knew it was going over and he delivered sort of this like F you point to the sky (laughs) like like he he had just conquered the world for a moment and the crowd the crowd Mike there were fans there they limited the gallery to about 5,000 total across the entire venue there was a gallery there that roared and just to hear that roar on Saturday it was like a real like coming out moment for the PGA Tours the the first real tangible dose of energy we heard from a while like golf tournament yeah you know we we certainly had it early when we had some chirping back and forth between the fans and the players on the course uh but it was there was you know we're we're coming up now on a year uh friday thursday night or friday morning i think it'll be a year since golf shut down day the world stops yeah um (laughs) and you know it was it was it was a little odd hearing fan crowds uh of that magnitude um, because the roar, and the roars the were there. With Holman one too. Yeah. It was another roar on Saturday morning, which is exciting. Again, seeing Spieth back in contention, another solid week, not the win he wanted, but yeah, just hearing those those crowd moments. You know, Billy Horschel versus the fans, like you mentioned, the the roars for Bryson and Spieth and the guys in contention. 
getting that tangible audio back, you could tell that the players were a little bit more invigorated than just an average week that we've seen over the past 12 months. So it was exciting to have that energy come back into the game. It was indeed. And uh, you, of course, had another winner this year with Bryson securing the W for you. So this is, what, three now? Three wins on picks for you this, this year? I think this is officially three in five weeks, yeah. too. Mike. Yeah, yeah. Remember, this is just Berger, uh, Max Homa, 58-1, to one, and right here with Bryson, number three. So uh, I want to shout out my listener and buddy, Sean, who I've played golf with before. I know he's been tailing some of these picks along with his buddies in Massachusetts, so shout out to that crew. Hoping to deliver another winner this week for the players. Be sure to check out my full card uh, at Co- Course of Life 1 later this week we'll get to our thoughts in a little bit but i'm glad that there are some people that are taking note here as we get into the 2021 golf season it's a good time to be hot if you're picking golf tournaments because golf is in in big time demand right now so shout out to everyone who's listening and following along and uh let's try and keep the streak rolling yeah Yeah. follow your streak don't look at my streak because (laughs) i thought i I, I thought thursday i thought i was looking okay on thursday friday not so much saturday really not good and sunday was just yeah <laughs> I'm, I'm only gonna do four i told you so i told you that's it okay, okay. i only said it four times okay. so sorry I, I, I'm, I'm through it. I appreciate it i appreciate it let's uh bounce around to what was happening elsewhere in the world of golf uh hey the lgbt lpga tour had a winner that wasn't a, uh, a quarter sister. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. The quarter tour has officially been renamed. Finally took long enough. Yeah. Uh, Austin Ernst got the W. Uh, I think Jessica finished in the top 10. Nilly was outside it, but yeah, the sister reign has ended on the LPGA tour. Shout out to women's day, uh, which we just celebrated on Monday. It was good to see a lot of celebration of women golfers out there too. They're really making their impact in the world. Uh, we love highlighting the LPGA and especially the quarter sisters too, because they just rock. They're really fun to follow on social media. They have great personalities and uh, it's, good to see that they're both playing some of their best golf right now it's cool to see that nelly you know has kind of resurged jessica's career jessica was kind of fading a little bit from the spotlight in years past but Mm -hmm. nelly coming on the scene has really invigorated her older sister jessica to get back into it so fun to watch the both of them also quick shout out to pascal cheyenne knight who had a had a pretty good t23 for the weekend she had a she had a great bunker save in there too that i saw up on the uh, lpga tour instagram account Good stuff. Yeah, they're fun to follow on social. They post a lot of golf content there on the LPGA socials. And yeah, Cheyenne, just really consistent. Just always popping on a leaderboard at least once every month or two. Good good position to be in if you want to keep your car on tour. Yep. Let's uh, talk the mini tour real quick because actually as we're recording this on a Tuesday, it is the start of the, stay with me here, McKenzie Tour, PGA Tour, Canada, Q School, USA East 3. In wow. One take there. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, and and so that that's happening. But the real reason is uh, we got we got a back to back winner on the mini tour. Yeah, past guests as well, too. Yeah. I mean, we said this and then he was lifting another trophy by the time we got to release last week's episode. So shout out to Joseph Winslow again, winning on the Florida Elite Mini Tour. He won 5K the week before. And I think it was like 6,500 this week. So listen, Mike, if, if you can't Monday qualify into these Corn Ferry events like he's, he's been trying to do and he's been come, coming real close, you might as well just kind of drive down the street and just, you know, pop into a tournament and win five, 5K a week, right? Yeah, That's, I mean, it's a nice consolation prize. I would right? love to get 5K a week. <laughs> and he does it playing golf. Yeah, that, that's I, the beauty of what he's doing versus I what could we're probably, doing. Probably, if I really wanted to lose 5K a week playing golf, you could. I can find some places for you to do that real yeah. fast. In fact, no, we, we wouldn't have to drive far. There's a, there's a bunch of people that are willing to take your money at a moment's notice. <laughs> it, it might as well, too. So, shout out to Joseph Winslow for, for thinking quick on the spot, adjusting the schedule, getting into those mini tour events, and, and back to back wins. And hopefully, we see more trophies soon from him. Before we get into this weekend's the players, let's talk about the Dell match play because Alex, are you are you going to be there? Are you volunteering? You're going to be on course. Yeah, back. So it's what? What are we on year five or technically four, fourth one, but fifth year of the tournament missed last year mm-hmm. for obvious reasons. But I'm back. I am going to be on the first par five mm. of each match. So it's the par five sixth hole. I'm, I'm a marshal there. So I, I'm the guy that's like putting his hands up and saying "quiet, please" on the tee, or, or I'm the guy that's like frantically running to the ball that like goes into the woods trying to locate it for, for Rory or, or Jordan Spieth or something like that. So looking forward to a lot of airtime coming up in a couple weeks, but I'm 
we're picking up the uniform this Saturday. So have, we're getting close. I'm starting to feel the energy. Have you been practicing both sprints in the event you need to sprint after a ball and then hand raises so you can keep your hands up all day? I have, yes. I've been practicing the hand okay. raises. And shout out to Dwayne Bach, who's Kevin Kisner's caddy on tour. I was talking with him on Twitter. He kept he keeps filming these marshals jokingly at all the tournaments with mm. very little fans, saying how it's funny how he thinks the marshals are practicing when they're just holding their hands up at nobody in the gallery. Yep. So I'm going to do that for him on the 6th tee. So look go. forward to seeing that in a couple of weeks when Kisner defends his title along with Dwayne there. Uh, so yeah, I'll be on the sixth hole looking forward. I'll tweet out the uniform so you can see what colors I'll be rocking all week, but it's going to be a different tournament, Mike, uh, because mm-hmm. of obviously everything going on, very limited galleries. It, it kind of sounds like it's just going to be Austin country club members, maybe some corporate people that get in, but there hasn't been a really official public ticket sale at any point in the process. So infrastructure limited, and it's going to be a very different look out there at Austin country. Club. It is indeed. Let's get into this week's The Players' Championship. We are one year now removed from when golf ended. And uh, before we get into that, though, can we just touch on real quick? It's been 20 years since the better than most putt by Tiger. Yes, Tiger's sidewinder at the Island Green 17th, uh, 2001 there, which broke a million different ways Mm -hmm. and found the bottom of the cup. That led to his first player's championship of two, also won in 2013. Not going to see him there this week, but it's mm-hmm. cool to, to remember that anniversary moment. And you know they're going to show that. What What's the over-under on that? At least three and a half, four and a half times this least, week on TV. At least. They'll be looking at that for sure. At yeah. least. Uh, <laughs> it, it is, as usual, a loaded field, in case you just didn't know with the players and how it works. Um, can, I, can I just ask, what, what do you think the chances are that Hideki Matsuyama, last year's first-round leader, <laughs> what do you think his chances are of getting revenge and winning this week? I love that storyline. Yeah. That is so cool you bring that up. It's funny, my, my last memories of betting on golf before COVID were uh, two players I remember betting on the players on my, on my Twitter card. Again, Course of Life won Wednesday afternoon, and you'll see MWRI and C for Mike's picks. I had Hideki Matsuyama last year at the players. Mm. He got off to that unbelievable start with a 63, and then the world shut down, and they didn't even play the rest of the tournament. And then I also had a South African who we've talked about named Christian Bezoidenhout, Mm. who who competes and won won a couple times in the European Tour. He had a 65 that day and shot seven under at the players in the opening round, and then the world stopped, and everyone forgot about that. Mm -hmm. I'm thinking maybe get at least one, if not both, those guys back in the car. You know, you'll pick up where you left off a year ago type of vibe thing. You know, I've got, you know, five or six names and i'm gonna i'm gonna put them the full card but there's definitely a thought there mike i I like the pickup where you left off five from from the 2020 tournament that never finished let's also remember let the players sometimes create some very long shot winners back in 2017 siwoo kim won he was 500 to one Mm. so you gotta that means we're checking the odds on nate lashley mike (laughs) that's what that means (laughs) Not a bad and he's had some good weeks. So, you know, he's he's probably not quite as far out as we think he is. But um probably wouldn't be wouldn't be a bad pick either. <laughs> um definitely staying away from some traditional names. You can be sure of that. No Brooks, no Tiger this week, just playing not playing because of injury reasons, obviously. Yep. Phil playing outside of the top one hundred in the world ranking for the first time in I think decades yeah. playing in this tournament. Gonna be staying away from him. But again, the full card is gonna be at Course of Life One Wednesday afternoon. For my other thoughts, it's going to be hard to keep Rory off there right now. <laughs> 2019 champ, I mean, in good form. Feels like he's toiling around with a couple things, but well, we'll put the full card on Twitter, and then we're looking to get that win number four for everyone out there. All right, indeed. Let's uh, switch over to Tuned In, where we're telling you what we tune into outside of the world of sports. Uh, it's been a year since golf. What else has it been a long time for you since, Alex, that I know you're tuning into? It's been so I, I recalled it was September 2019 mm. was the last live music concert I went to. Mm. How sad is that? Man, it's just that's more recent than in, me. So, you know, <laughs> so I live in the live music capital. Of the that's world. true. There's that's shows true. left and right in Austin, Texas. It's a sin for me to be going almost two years without a show. But obviously things in the world have interrupted that pattern. We're, we're seeing lots of murmurs that with everything progressing in the vaccine that the, these could return maybe by maybe summer or fall months. So here's hoping to that. But in the meantime, 
I've been kind of like um, just you know thinking back on days past. I've been watching wa- lots of like old concert videos on YouTube and like old like nightclub and like live music festival performances, just like to remember that roar, Mike. I miss the roar of you know, ladies and gentlemen, and name your favorite artist, and the crowd screams. You know, just as the simple things like that, that 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 I'm really missing right now. So I've gone down a lot of weird YouTube rabbit holes right now, just just enjoying the the fondness of live music, which hopefully gets back in our lives. Mm-hmm. It's, it's understandable. It's understandable. Yeah. So hopefully a few months away. But uh, until then, you know, there's all sorts of YouTube videos. You can watch old festival performances on YouTube. I've watched old radio station concerts that I went to when I was younger that are somehow still on YouTube. There are videos where you can hear music played and it sounds like you're in the bathroom of a concert and the door opens and closes, you know, like that sound effect when oh you're God. in the bathroom, which is not. <laughs> there's all sorts of things that you can do on YouTube. It's, it's a wonderful world out there if you just want to, like, get emotional and get your feelings yeah. yeah i mean you 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 do what you got to do man to stay healthy exactly that's right times are tough <laughs> what are you tuned into uh i had the uh unfortunate uh, uh pleasure of watching uh the brand new tom and jerry movie on hbo max oh i wanted to give this a go what, yeah. what were your thoughts uh so you can hear my full review on my other podcast three minute movie reviews shameless plug nice plug um the best parts of the movie are the parts with Tom and Jerry. When we start getting humans involved in it, it got pretty horrible. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. Noted. Yeah. Just We're just here for the Tom and Jerry interplay yeah. and nothing else. Now, now, keep in mind, this is a, uh, a hybrid movie where you have live action and then you have animation on top of it with Tom and Jerry. Oh, wow. And, That's going to bother a commoner yeah, like me. Well, here's the really thing that really may blow your mind through the whole thing is that all of the non-human animals throughout this movie are animated. So cats, mice, dogs, birds, uh, elephants would show up in it as well. Uh, And then also the carcasses and bone structures of these animals because we get to see the inside of a hotel kitchen. So we have dead fish. We see a museum at one point. So we see the animated bones of a dinosaur. Um, It was a little weird. Wow, I might need weird. like a substance or two before I watch this. It yeah. sounds like I, uh, I don't know. If make it even weirder. Weird. <laughs> 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 um, so I, I can't really recommend it, but if you have HBO Max, it's uh, it's okay. It's all right. Good stuff. Cool. Uh, let's uh, let's let's get into this week's guest, Alex. Pretty much everyone knows at ninety eight point five, the Sports Hub in New England is the Boston Sports Talk Radio Station, and this week's guest, Hardy, is a host on the Midday Show as well as a big time golfer. Yeah, he hosts the. Not only is he part of the Zoe and Beetle Show middays five days a week, which I love listening to. Great personality on there, but he hosts the uh, the golf show on Saturday mornings, which is cool. He's a lifelong golfer. We get into his game, the Boston golf scene, Boston sports. All sorts of fun conversation with Hardy. Great personality to join the show. We'll get into that interview with Hardy in just a moment. But first, as always, we want to let you know that it's brought to you by our friends at Desert Fox Golf, um, the makers of the Phone Caddy. The Desert Fox team is based in Arizona, so they know golf, and the Phone Caddy is crafted by both golfers and engineers. The Phone Caddy is unique because it mounts right onto your golf cart in seconds and a place where you can actually see it and use your phone right on that that post on in front of you. So it's right there, and uh, it's great for shooting video. Alex, you did this for our On the Course vlog series that you're doing. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. Uh, and so other than shooting video, you can keep your yards and scoring apps at your fingertips, change music, answer calls and texts, and more all with the phone caddy from Desert Fox. It's the most functional way to keep your phone safe and ready on the course at all times. The phone caddy works seamlessly with almost any phone model and quickly becomes the talk of your foursome. So for our listeners, because we love you guys so much, you can save 10% off your purchase with the promo code Course of Life. And you can use this promo code to save 10% off your phone caddy in any color and their pay patriotic line. So go get your phone caddy today with promo code course of life at desertfoxgolf.com. Again, that's promo code course of life at desertfoxgolf.com for 10% off your order. Go get your phone caddy today. Next up on the tee, covering everything in Boston sports with Zoe and Beetle. You hear him on 98 the Sports 98.5 The Sports Hub. Also a big golfer and host of the Sports Hub Golf Club. It's Hardy joining us on the course of life. Hardy, how's it going this evening? 
Excellent. How you doing, Alex? Definitely. Love having a golfer on who's also got the Boston Sports Radio connections, two of my favorite things to get after. Um, let's talk about uh, winter golf, though. How is everything up there? From what I hear, it's been a pretty snowy winter the past few weeks. But is there any horizon toward, towards spring golfing weather up there? Or are the clubs still dusty for you? Uh, my clubs uh, generally do not leave the car because I'm, you know, I'm nuts. I'll... Uh, I'll drop my kids off at whatever they're doing on a Saturday and find a range that's open. And, uh, you know, I'll, I'll hit balls when it's 20 degrees, you know, it's as long as it's not too windy and I, you know, I'm not, you know, completely miserable. Um, I'll, I'll try and keep swinging, uh, swinging the wrenches as my friend Billy Lanny likes to say in terms of, in terms of actually playing. Yeah, you're right. It's been a snowy winter. I, I really can't see golf on the horizon right now. We've had a little bit of thawing here the last week or so, but it's mostly still snow on the ground, uh, golf courses and everything around. I mean, I judge by my yard because I, you know, live pretty close to the places I play. And if if there's no way I'd be chipping balls in my yard right now, there's no way I'd be playing golf anytime soon. So I'd say we're probably a solid six weeks out before it's a real consideration. Nice. Well, I commend you at least getting in those cold weather range sessions. I told you before we hopped on, I grew up in Boston, but I'm, my blood is just so thin now that I've lived in Texas for 10 years. So if it's anything below like 55 degrees, I, I, I won't even suit up. That, that's how weak it's gotten for me these days. Well, let me, you're ruined now because I grew up in Michigan and then I moved to uh, Albuquerque oh. and <laughs> spent a couple few years there. And then I moved to Las Vegas and spent seven years there. So after 10 years in the Southwest, when I moved back to a climate, you know, like like I grew up in when I moved to Boston, um, that was 16 years ago. And I've been cold every day since then. (laughs) I I mean, seriously, I I get out on the course and, you know, if it's like, you know, uh, uh, chilly spring day or a chilly fall day and it's, you know, 45 or 50. I've said to my playing partners before, all I really need to be comfortable is 40 more degrees. I need it to be, I need to, I need twice the number of degrees we have right now. This is stupid. I don't appreciate it. I don't like it. Hotter the better. I mean, I convinced myself of that when I was living in, you know, the in the desert. Hotter the better, hotter the better. And get used to it. So my blood is still thinned out. It, it hasn't thickened up after all this time in Boston. So yeah, forget it, man. You're done. I love that. And there's this weird kind of reverse osmosis down here where in July and August, when it's 105 degrees each day, the courses are empty and you, and you can play 36 holes a day whenever you want because no one dares go out there when it's that hot. So I, I enjoy every bit of that as well. Yeah, I used to, uh, I used to play in Vegas and I, we got off the course one day. We had walked 18 and uh, we got done and I'm like, man, it's like really hot. And, you know, just started to think like I, I haven't gone to the bathroom in like six hours. And I, <laughs> you know, I had a bunch of waters and Gatorades on the course, uh, got in the car and turned on the radio and it was 118 degrees. Like, oh, well, that explains it. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Nice. No, no, no wonder I'm a little dehydrated. I guess so. Let, let's talk quickly about Boston golf specifically, like in the past year. We've had a lot of different guests on that golf in different parts of the world. But oh, the overall feedback is that, like, there's been a lot more interest in, in people watching and playing the game. And in Boston golf, it was interesting. I remember you guys were having a lot of conversations on the radio about how the courses were struggling to reopen. But a lot of people kind of found respite in golf as an activity amidst the craziness of the world in this past year. What have you noticed kind of up there? Are the courses more packed? Is there more demand? What, what does it look like these days? Yeah, um, I, you know, I've been a muni rat my whole life. So I was used to kind of, you know, having to, you know, wait my turn and get onto the course when it, when it uh, you know, was the best time to get on and navigate through all that up until a couple of years ago when I finally you know, became a grown up and, and joined a club. And I really did it for my family. I did it so, you know, the kids would have a pool to hang out at. And, uh, nice. uh, and, and really what I, what I found, and I had worked at uh, a club before, uh, like in high school, my first year in college. And I had, you know, been around golf my whole life, but I never really understood like the private club um, draw. And it was, it dawned on me. And, and it was the GM of the club that I, I joined who said, you're not paying for exclusivity. I mean, some people are, depending on the type of club you join. You're, you're not, you know, paying necessarily for the nicest golf course in the world. What you're paying for is the accessibility. 
yeah. and the and the ability to as I did up until last summer, uh, you know, the summer before, really the first summer I joined there was decide at four o'clock on a Tuesday afternoon. You know what? I'm going to go. I'm going to go play nine by myself and show up at the course and walk right on and, you know, walk nine holes in an hour. And that, that's a foreign home. concept to a lot of people. Yeah. Yeah. And what, and, but, but it's great. And it's, and it's, it's, you know, worth it. Yeah. That what that went away last year because you're right. A lot of people found golf to be something that they had either missed, uh, you know, had started playing played when, you know, years ago. And when it became one of the few things you could do during the pandemic, they rediscovered it or people who had been playing just started playing more of it because again, it was one of the few things you could do. So while I, I think it's great for the game and I'm all about growing the game, you know, selfishly, I, I kind of longed for the ability to, to just show up at the, at the course and walk on and, and play a few holes and not even, not even play nine. Sometimes go over there at six o'clock at night and say, I'm going to play as many as I can until I can't see the ball. Yeah. And, and, and might even get in nine holes, but you know, those, those days went away last summer. So, um, I don't know what's going to happen this year. It's a good question, Alex. I don't know if people are going to kind of revert back to their their normal activities now that they're able to do them. Uh, you know, people who used to, you know, vacation on the Cape uh, didn't do as much of that maybe this year because not a lot of stuff was open. A lot of people just went to the Cape and stayed there if you had a house there. But um, it's it's going to be interesting. And, and I think it's it speaks to the larger issue of how society is going to react and and know how long it's going to take to quote unquote go back to normal it's 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 not going to be the flip of a switch i think you're going to see things um you know take a long time before people revert back to their old habits definitely yeah so when, when the golf season does get back in full swing i know we're going to hear you on the sports up golf club it's the classic kind of saturday a.m you know driving to the course show for for a golfing audience to listen to i'm going to give you a little throwback hardy it was maybe summer of 2007 and i was interning as a producer at the now defunct 890 espn am and oh, and wow. and did a little production for a saturday morning golf show with bob bubka who is a golf media member who's been around forever but i remember that format i I remember the calls that came in on Saturday mornings to that show. I'm curious what it's like for you these days hosting the golf club, you know, weekly when it is in season and what your experience has been hosting the show. Uh, I had to convince them to, to let me do a golf show, you know, in the sports <laughs> I love it. signed on. You're a soldier yeah, for the golfing community. I appreciate that. <laughs> yeah. When we signed on in, uh, 2009, I guess I, I had to convince them that I could do sports talk cause I've been a rock DJ my whole life. And, you know, they, they allowed me and, and, uh, you know, the morning show, uh, back on WBCN, um, you know, to stick around and audition and try and, and, you know, get and keep jobs there. And, you know, for, for people who aren't in Boston, I won't bore you with it, but it's worked out very well for the yeah. radio station. The, the station's been, you know, we've been very, you know, lucky and fortunate to, to be in a great sports town and had great rating success, but they didn't want to do a golf show. They you know, they were going off of the template from from other sports stations that, you know, were under the, the company's umbrella. And they said, no, they don't work. No, they don't work. So finally, I I convinced them after a few years, I said, just give me an hour at 6 a.m. on Saturday mornings when it's satellite programming or, you know, it's it's public affairs. Bump that to a different hour. I don't need anything out of it. Just let me go on and 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 see if people are into it. And and they were. It was great. I, I, I had the opportunity to, you know, uh, highlight different golf courses in the area, do a lot of equipment stuff. Mm. And what I soon <clears throat> learned from doing the show is that uh, golfers are one of the few audiences, I think, as a group that love to be sold to. You know, if you're doing a NASCAR show, chances are people are not going to be interested in having a segment about tires that uh, you can buy for your car. That right. Also They're not looking to buy shocks and struts on the spot. Yeah. <laughs> no, they, they don't come But Golfers love it. Yes. Talk, you know, talk to me about the, uh, the new wedges or the new drivers or the new shoes and all that stuff. Yes. Yes. You know, into all that stuff. So it was, it was good for advertisers. It was good to talk about. And here it is now. Um, oh, I don't know. Uh, eight, nine years later or something. We're going into, I think our eighth or ninth season. And, uh, it's been good. You know, the, the, the calls are fun because 
if it's if it's around a major tournament, people you know have their thoughts on you know who's going to make a move uh, over the weekend and who's going to end up winning the thing. If it's if it's just a guest that I get to have on, I, you know, I get to play fanboy and talk to either a uh, you know a, a PGA Tour guy or even just a head pro, and then you know and bug them with my stupid questions and. You know, I always tell them, I'm like, I love to argue about the golf swing like I know something about it, nice. like I'm any good at this game. But, you know, I'm going to I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be your worst student, you know, when it comes to a, at least an interview about that. But, yeah, the instructional segments are fun. The equipment segments are fun. The uh, the segments that we do uh, about the tour uh, are, are a blast. It's you know, it's the one hour a week where I can really feel like, man, I can talk about what I really wish I could be talking about all week long instead of, oh, I don't know, mid-season baseball. <laughs> <laughs> so for, for me, it's great. It's, it's, a, it's a way to keep my sanity for an hour every weekend. I appreciate that. Let's get, let's get into the guys that you have to put up with all week long. Uh, Zoe and Beetle on 98.5, the sports hub. I'm listening every day, Monday through Friday. Uh, broadcast on the app worldwide as well, too, which is where I listen in Texas. I'm, I'm curious, just, you know, that relationship with the three of you guys, it seems like it's very familial and you've been with each other on the air for a while. You know, how much is kind of, you know, reading each other's, you know, playbook for what you're going to talk about each day in each segment? I know that when you're working with Scott Zolak, there's a certain amount of a wild card aspect uh, to what he's going to say or bring up on the radio. But kind of what goes into each show with you guys and, and how, how do you make it so special each day? It's funny you bring that up. Today we were talking about Tiger Woods and uh, Zoe said, uh, and, and I mean, right on top of what we were talking about, we were talking about Tiger's injuries. And he said, it's kind of like that woman in Connecticut who got attacked by the chimp and had her face chewed off. Yep. Very so, relevant. Yeah. Oh, I said, well, is it now? Well, please, <laughs> you know, let's <laughs> let's just see if we can land this plane. I mean, I, I started in on the midday show pretty much from the beginning. So I've been working with Zoe on a, you know, daily basis now for all these years. And uh, I knew Mark from, right from the beginning, too. He was there from day one of the sports hub. You know, he originally started with the Felger and Maz. But you're right. There's a familiarity. There's the ability to kind of read each other and and try not to step on each other. And um, I, what, what can I say? You know, you do a show with, with a couple of guys for uh, that, that amount of time. And uh, it's hard to imagine doing it with anyone else and it's it's their show it's zolak and bertrand so i i try and be there to you know add in you know when i when, when i can or when i feel i can add something to the conversation but uh i we, we've we've fallen into a pretty good rhythm lord knows we should after you know doing it together for, his, for all these years now. Yeah, it's an awesome division of the responsibilities on the show. I love your comedic relief as well that, that, that brings rings through every day. And one thing I got to shout out, which I love, my favorite segment is the fake promos, which I believe are on Fridays. I'm curious, how did those originate? Because you guys basically have, a, you clip together a bunch of different like innuendos and funny little things that come up throughout the week and play them at the end of the week. But but how did, how did we first stumble into that idea? There was another producer by the name of Mark Feldman who took an audio clip, uh, I can't even repeat, that one of our <laughs> former hosts said on the air, before Mark Bertrand, uh, oh, okay. was, yep. you know, the, the anchor of the show, and and used it and put together a fake promo just for us to listen to. And it was one of those things that was hysterically funny because it was so inappropriate and we would never, you know, put it on the air. But it gave someone the idea and it was either our producer at the time, Jim Louth or our current or our current producer, Tom Morgan, we call him T-Bone, um, who said, well, let's start doing these every week and we'll take the really odd moments from the show or you know, just the moments where things go horribly wrong and turn those into the fake promos. And, you know, it's, it's really Tom who just kind of collects these things during the week. And then on Fridays during the show, um, most Fridays I'll, I'll go in for one segment and we'll play them all because if you do a lot of production, um, sometimes you get too close to it you think something's funny and it's not, you just need a second set of ears to kind of listen to it and, right. and decide, you know, if it, if it works or not, or if it's too much of an inside joke and it, and it won't be funny for you, Alex listening in Austin, who maybe didn't hear that segment of the show on that Tuesday and doesn't know what it's in reference to. Mm, but yeah. uh, I'm glad to hear you say you like it because I've heard from other people that are like, I don't get it. I don't think it's funny. I'm like, ah, I don't know. Maybe you need to listen more or listen less. I don't know what the answer is for somebody who doesn't like fake promos, yeah. but 
there, there's no way we're going to stop doing them. So I'm glad you like them. I think the cuts work just to kind of, it has that dry delivery and the way they get cut is very skillful. So, so shout out to the fake promos as well. Uh, final show related question. I got to ask, it's, it's kind of a mystery, but I know you can kind of help debunk it. You know, just everyone at the station is really shocked about how much of a mess Scott Zolak truly is. I feel like he's always kind of leaving something behind in the studio or he's just kind of, there's just a trail of trail trash that seemed to follow him wherever he goes. Do you have any explanation as to how this actually happens? What's the anatomy of Zoe just kind of being the mess that he is in studio? Well, part of it is very calculated and he does it as a means to bother people. You know, I think he specifically does it, uh, I would say for Maz because he knows it upsets Maz. Uh, part of it is just Zoe. And, and um, you know, I don't want to say like the locker room mentality, but you know, the, here's a guy who spent years and years uh, as a starting quarterback at Maryland, as a, as a quarterback for the Patriots, and then with Miami. And this is a guy who, you know, spent a lot of years of his formative, you know, his formative adulthood years in locker rooms. Now, not, not to say that everybody who, is, you know, spent a lot of time in locker rooms ends up that way. Yeah. But I think it's, I think it's part of the explanation but it's also part of the reason why um, Zoe's the way he is, you know, wildly entertaining an absolutely fantastic analyst on the, on the Patriots games. But, you know, you come to, to know people and appreciate like who they are and what they can do and, and understand it's part of the, it's part of the whole package. Yep. Okay. You know, pe- people say about, you know, Bertrand, he's like, you know, he can be like really surly or seem like impatient with me or impatient with Zoe. But part of that is what makes him such a good host too, because there has to be a certain amount of impatience to keep the show moving. And, yeah. and in, in order to, you know, put together, you know, some, uh, you know, coherent segments, uh, you can't suffer through a lot, a lot of nonsense. So while it may seem like a, a personality flaw uh, for, for, you know, Zoe or for Beetle or for, you know, my crankiness or whatever it is, it's, you know, without that, you don't get the other stuff. So I, look, I made my peace with Zoe and, and I, you, you can't let it get to you because he really doesn't, I, he's, he doesn't have a mean bone in his body. He truly doesn't. It's just, it's how he is. Yeah. You know, it's like, why does Gronkowski have to be such a goofball? I don't know. It's part of what makes him tick and his ability to, uh, you know, catch two touchdown passes from Tom Brady in the Super Bowl with the Bucks. It's part of it's part of what makes him him. Yes, you Just, you never you never get half of Zoe. You're you're always getting the whole thing every, every time. So I appreciate that authenticity yeah. at its finest. <laughs> um, let's talk a few sports takes real quick uh, to get everyone in touch with kind of Boston sports and, and what you guys talk about on a daily basis on the show. Part of the dynamic of this podcast, my co-host isn't here right now, but he's a big Yankees fan and I'm a Red Sox fan. When, when we got this going in 2018, it was all sunshine shining rainbows for Red Sox Nation when we got the World Series. Since then, it's been a a, a lot of misery. Uh, Is there, in terms of the people who you've talked to, Red Sox fans and callers, can you strike any positive vibes for this Red Sox team this season? Because I've been struggling to find any so far in spring training. No, it's uh, low expectations is the only thing I can give you on this, Alex. (laughs) I mean, it's not like, uh, you know, the Celtics who were expected to do great things and have been struggling lately. Um, It's it's not like, you know, the Patriots who have, you know, set their own bar of unbelievable expectations for the Red Sox. I don't think people are expecting anything. So every win is going to be a gift this year based on the, the, the rotation that they've put together and the way they're uh, approaching things. And I, I mean, it's a different vibe, not just because of COVID down in spring training. I'm sure you know by now, this is the first time, uh, I think Johnny Miller uh, commented on it. He's a longtime, um, uh, you know, Red Sox reporter. Yeah. Uh, this is the first time since new ownership took, took over that they did not do their spring training, you know, kind of state of the Red Sox picnic table, Fort Myers meeting with the media. Uh, they're just not talking about it. And, mm-hmm. you know, High and Bloom's got a, a big job ahead of them. You know, they decided to bring Alex Cora back. And uh, even Alex Cora seems like happy to be here. You know, not going to do a whole lot of complaining myself because I think he does feel lucky and should feel lucky to have a job in baseball, period. So get ready to lower your expectations and just treat every win as a, as a beautifully wrapped present because I don't expect them to win a whole, a whole bunch. And if they do, it's 
you should treat it as a pleasant surprise. Indeed. Cheers to that. Let's talk about the Patriots real quick. Something I've tried to kind of emphasize to like the rest of the country and the world and then the non-sports audience that listens to our podcast is it's been very mixed emotions for myself as a lifelong Patriots fan watching Tom dominate in Tampa Bay. He gets the ring. I kind of explained how I was like, you know, I was rooting for him, but I had that vibe where I felt like I was watching my ex-girlfriend go happily marry someone uh, that she seemed to be more better off with. So am I in the minority sharing kind of that opinion? Uh, based on what you've seen from the callers in Boston, or, or is that kind of a majority opinion on how everyone feels about uh, Tom getting number seven? I think you kind of summed it up, and I think people were happy for him, but they felt a little weird watching it, like a little sick to their stomach, knowing that, wow, you know, this this used to be how we felt. But I think people also had the immediate um, realization that this wouldn't have happened in Boston. He didn't have the same weapons, and You know, some of the success that he had in Tampa, I think, is a direct result of just having a new place to play and being reinvigorated by it. So it it was difficult to watch. I I myself was rooting for 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 Brady, Uh, not necessarily the Buccaneers as a whole, but just for Brady to win, because I thought it made for a great story. I'm sure you can appreciate this as a guy who's, you know, in the business and trying to, you know, come up with you know, ways of, of, of talking about these things. It's such a great story for him to win with a different team and to see what happened with the Patriots this year. It may not be the best thing for Patriots fans, but in terms of something to talk about and to have conversations about with each other and with the listeners, it's fantastic. And I think people appreciate, even if they, you know, they weren't aware of it, they realize that, Oh, that's that's really what you're rooting for. You're rooting for a good story. You're rooting for something to that you know you can think about after it happens, as opposed to uh, ho hum, just another Kansas City Chiefs win. They had the better quarterback and the better team, and I suppose we could have seen that one coming. Yeah. No, it's more fun to 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 see it go down this way. Um, and and you know who knows what that means for the for the future of the Patriots, and if this is going to inspire them to do anything differently, but. I think your reaction is the reaction of a lot of Boston fans. And I mean, they were, they were happy and excited and compelled to see it go down the way it did. But, uh, just that little bit of queasiness. <laughs> yeah, man, I'm just I'm just hoping for a reinvigorated bill. That's all I see, see a lot see a lot of vacation early off to start the off season. So hopefully that that tune changes in the next few months here to get me uh, re excited again. It's Hardy uh, 98.5 The Sports Hub. You're on Zone Beetle 10 to 2 Eastern every day. Also on Sirius XM Lithium as well too. Let's do some quick shot questions. It's, you're at Hardy 985 on Instagram. First one. Yep. Let's do a couple golf questions. Obviously the hot take question. A lot of news surrounding. Tiger and the accident he just had. The the common question that we bring up all the time in the golf world is Tiger, will he get to that 18 major mark that Jack Nicholas holds? Now, uh, on the offset of this news and, you know, obviously the rehab and recovery he's going to have to go through, where, where do you think that number sits for him? Well, I think the more realistic question is will he be able to play tournament golf again and can he get one more win to break the tie that he has with Sam Snead for the for the most wins in Yeah, eighty two. Yeah, eighty three. Yep. Yeah, yeah, and to hold that record by himself. And even that is such a tough ask. And uh, I, I, I don't feel it's insensitive to be asking about it right now. I mean, after, when the accident happened and we all learned it was non-life threatening, the two you know, big questions I heard were, uh, was he on anything? And when is he going to be able to play again? Yeah. Um, that's, you know, that's just a, you know knee-jerk sports fan reaction from people who are either Tiger fans or golf fans or just sports fans. So um, I, I treat Tiger the way I treat Tom Brady uh, because I, I – you know, piped up years ago and said, oh, I don't think he's done. He's not going to win another major. And then he shocked everybody at the 2019 Masters. So, uh, and in and, and much the same way I counted Brady out in 2014, I am out of the business of predicting the demise of both Tom Brady and Tiger Woods. Yeah, those are not so, great businesses to be in. I agree. No, no, it's a terrible <laughs> business to be in. Yeah, um, let's get to... Uh, Boston golf area favorite golf course in the Boston area, public or private. I love going to Granite Links and playing with my buddies when I can. But do you have somewhere on the north or south shore or in the city that you like playing a lot that you like to shout out? My favorite course is on the north shore. It's the Myopia Hunt Club. Mm. Um, it's nice. not a well known course. It's it's hosted four U.S. Opens, but every hole is memorable. Uh, there are some of the most 
diabolical greens I've ever been on in my life. Everything from a, a sub 300 par four to a 252 yard uh, par three. Um, that you that that course is just full of surprises. Always memorable. Myopia on the nice. Trip. Let's get a way too early uh, Detroit Lions prediction for you next season. <laughs> what do you what do you think their win re- loss record is going to be? Uh, I'll put him at six and ten. That's, <laughs> that's not just that's a very Lions like record. Jared Goff in a quarterback. New new head coach Dan Campbell appears to be a bit of a train wreck already. Dan I'll Campbell. Him, I'll, I'll put I'll put him in at six and ten. You guys have had your fun with Dan Campbell. He is he is great. He is a treat for, for media, uh, isn't he? Oh, sure. He's so fun. Yeah, <laughs> and our, our last question, we love to wrap our interviews with our 19th hole question. So when you get done playing 18 and you get into your favorite clubhouse, what's your go-to order, Hardy, for like a meal and a drink you like to have after a round of the course? Uh, I love Arnold Palmer's. What can I say? It's, it is yep. the, the, the perfect refreshing. I, I'm boring. I don't drink. You know, I, I lived in Vegas for seven years, man. I caught my limit a long time ago when it comes to booze. Nice. So uh, I, I go I go with an Arnold Palmer and uh, 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 chicken wings. That's it. Arnold Palmer and chicken wings. That's what I want. Love it. Tried and true combo. Hey, Hardy, thanks for hopping on the course of life. Really appreciate it. Looking forward to hearing more from you on the air, obviously. And uh, hit them straight as well. Thanks, Alex. I appreciate it. That interview with Hardy from 98.5 The Sports Hub is brought to you by our friends at Groovit Golf, the makers of the Groovit Golf Brush. You've seen it on the bag of tour caddies and your favorite athletes and golf personalities on social media, and it's back in full stock for the 2021 golf season. The brush's patent and pump sprays water or cleaning solution right on the club face for you. The quickness and efficiency to clean clubs or your golf ball can happen in seconds. The Groovit brush includes a detachable magnet that makes it easier to use and comes with a three-year bristle guarantee. That means if you can wear out the brush head cleaning clubs in three years, not not that we think you will because you're playing a lot of golf if you are, but if you do, send it back and Groovit will get you a free replacement. So prepare to be amazed with the consistency and control that clean grooves will give you. Using your existing golf clubs with the Groovit, you'll get the spin, trajectory, and consistency you're looking for. So head on over to GrooveItBrush.com to get your Groovit brush. Again, that's GrooveItBrush.com and get your Groovit brush today. And we're back. Great interview there with Hardy, uh, filling 20 hours a week of Boston Sports Talk Radio. Um, I, you know, not that we struggled to fill an hour, but I couldn't imagine doing 20 hours a week. I just can't. Down, downright impressive. Yeah. And, and he has to fend off Zoe and Beetle the whole week, too. Everyone knows Scott Zolak is quite the effervescent personality. It was fun <laughs> getting into the, the details of working with Zoe there and, and trying to keep his, his mess tidy in the studio as well, too. So love getting the behind the scenes look at Zolak and Bertrand for all the 98.5 fans out there. Uh, if you're just listening now and you're from the Boston area and want to hear from, more from this podcast or more of the personalities, be sure to subscribe to us. We're on Apple Podcasts, iHeartRadio, Spotify. Check us out on YouTube as well for more great interviews, just like Artie. Let's uh, talk a little baseball. It's spring training. My Yankees are 4-3 and three in the Grapefruit League. Your Boston Red Sox are 3-4. and four. That seems appropriate. Boston sucks. I'm sorry. <laughs> Yeah, I think I blindly bet, bet on all the games they've won. So I bet them three times, and they've won every single time. So it's been nice to see some paradise action, and mm-hmm. we're officially back. And we're, not, we're this is this was the moment last year that we like we're like, oh wow, they're canceling spring training games. Why would they do that? Yeah, why would they cancel yeah. a spring training game? And then like yeah. we, you know, we, we quickly got educated very fast. So ho- hopefully that doesn't happen this year. Hopefully, <laughs> hopefully not. Hopefully not. Maybe we'll put odds on whether we'll get a full season or not. We should. I'm sure there's something. Yes. I'm sure there's a line out there in. Vegas for that somewhere. <laughs> yeah, it was we, that. It was yeah. that. March Madness. Those March were the cancels Madness. at this moment last year. I remember telling you like vividly this exact week. I was like, Mike, they can't take away March Madness. Yeah. They can't take away the match play, and they can't take away the Masters. And the we next, did all three. The next we got week, the Masters we, later in the year, but yeah. we were crying a lot the week after. That. <laughs> yeah. Tough time for us. Um, speaking of March Madness, it's coming up. Selection Sunday is next Sunday, this coming Sunday, depending on when you listen to this. It could be past Sunday. 
hopefully you're not that late on this episode. Uh, and hey, we, we got a bracket, Alex. We're, we're doing oh, yeah. it. it. We are. It's for everyone too. Like yeah. everyone listening, I don't, I don't care who you are, <laughs> as long as you got five dollars and you and you can shoot me a Venmo at Alex L nine one eight seven, or just send us a DM on Instagram at COL Podcast or Course of Life Alex. I'll get you hooked up. But yeah, five bucks. The it's on Yahoo. You can literally just search Course of Life. Just search Course of Life. It's a public bracket. You join. I'll find you on there. Get you in. And let's uh, let's bust our brackets as fast as Ooh, possible. Yeah. You know, it's all it's always this key. Like, can you like make it to the weekend before your your buck brass bracket gets busted? It, and it always happens very fast. Let's remind everyone: you can no longer say that it's a guarantee a number one seed will beat a sixteen seed. No, yeah, UMBC crushed Virginia a couple of years ago, and then fun fact: Virginia came back and won the national championship the next year. Mm. So, like, basket college basketball is completely unpredictable. Yeah, your bracket can go whatever direction you want. And you really can't judge because everything has happened that you think might not happen. So it's it'll be fun to fill the brackets out in the next week. We'll get into some maybe a little bracketology yeah. on next week's episode. Maybe. Let's do it. Let's uh, hashtag always end with food. Yes, and it's brought to you by our new friends, Tosi Snacks. Yeah. Uh, I'm really excited to have the Tosi team on board with us. This is the perfect golf snack, Mike. The Tosi Super Bites. They're crunchy, delicious, shockingly good for you as well, too. I've already tried a few. I know you're getting some. They don't melt. Keep them in your golf bag, gym bag, car, ready to go. They've got almond flavor, peanut butter, chocolate, cashew, coconut, almond, blueberry, they're in a lot of golf courses right now too. Mm-hmm. So if you go to the pro shop at Pebble Beach or Riviera or some really famous places around the golf uh, world, you'll see them. Uh, so proud to be a partner. Our promo code is COL20 for 20% off of your order at TOSI.com, T-O-S-I.com. So the, the ultimate test for me, Mike, was – I needed to take the, these out and have them as my 10th tea snack. I'm, yes. I'm very finicky with the fuel I put in my body, mm-hmm. even though I love a hot dog at the turn just as much as the next person. Sometimes when you want to really focus on the round, it's good to have something a little bit better for you. And I brought out the uh, the cashew coconut, which is a fantastic flavor, by the way. Mm-hmm. It really, really took me by surprise how tasty this was. Worked very well. Gave me the fuel I needed for the back nine. Shot a little back nine 39. A nice play for me. So that was the fuel I needed. So I'm going to keep that routine going on my end. And uh, I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing what, what your thoughts are, too. Yeah, I should be getting mine sometime this week. N- not in time for the round I'm playing this week. I'm actually playing on Wednesday. Oh, so, nice. Good for you. Uh, cool. I'll have to find something else in the meantime uh, to keep me going. It's a nice like a morning snack to replace a granola bar. Mm -hmm. It's good like if you're in between or or a break on a shift too. If you only got five or ten minutes to eat, it's just kind of it's just the right amount of food. You can split the the bite bar up into two snacks if you really want to, but. I really genuinely enjoy the product and not only the story and the backstory of how this brand came to be, which we're going to look forward to telling you guys in, in the coming weeks as well, too, on the podcast. So shout out to Tosi, promo code COL20 again for 20% off. That was our hashtag always in with food segment. Again, we look forward to seeing you next week. Hopefully I've got another winner to deliver for you and everyone has a good week. <laughs>